In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about how to convert surface, either flat or curved, into a brick wall using Grasshopper. Generation of the bricks will be based on their dimensions, which we are going to set first. Let's dive right in. Hi guys, Lazar here. Before we start, if this is your first time here and you want to learn how to use Rhino and Grasshopper, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell button so you don't miss anything as we upload new tutorials each week about Rhino and Grasshopper and how to use them specifically for architecture. For all of you who would like to go step further, we created an extended tutorial in which we'll add a few layers of complexity and as a final output we'll get two different results. In the first method, we will use multiple alternator points based on their position and the range we set, the bricks will be rotated. Another method involves the curve as an attractor. Based on proximity from the curve to the bricks, they will be rotated. All right, first I'm going to show you how this definition works. Here we have flat and curved surface and based on these two parameters, the brick wall will be generated. Uh, if we, for example, uh, modify this curve, for example, move it a little bit up, you can notice the brick wall is modified based on this uh, curve. Also, if we, for example, take uh, this control point and move it, let's say, in this direction, the wall is modified. Then here we have uh, the dimensions of the brick length, width and the height. If we change brick length from 2.3 to 2.2 if we change the height let's say from 0.06 to 0.09 all right so basically based on uh, these two curves and on these dimensions for the brick uh, the wall is generated now we'll go step by step and explain how this definition works i will disable this for now and I will change the mode. All right. So first uh, we take uh, two curves. So these two guys and create the surface. We can see it here. So we have these two curves or if we want to create a flat wall, we can use these two curves. I will turn this off and this one and we can create the flat surface. So here we have flat surface, here we have curved surface. So these two components will place in the stream filter. In the zero, we'll have the flat and in the one, we'll place a curved surface. In the G, we'll define which of these two inputs we want to develop further. So in the value list component, if I double click, flat will be equal to zero, curved will be equal to one. So it means if we uh, choose curved, then this input will be in the output. If we choose flat, because flat is zero, then this one will be in the output here. All right, I will turn this off, turn this on. All right, so uh, next thing is to take the bottom point the next thing is to define the point which has the Z coordinate somewhere here on this plane. So first we'll create a bounding box. And if we use component evaluate box, zero will place in these three inputs. The plane is generated here. If we move, for example, this up, the plane also will be moved up. All right. Then we'll slice this curve using contour. In the S, we'll place which geometry we want to slice. In the P, we'll place the point. So from this point, we'll slice this geometry along Z direction. And in the D, we'll define the distance between two slices. So you can see here, based on the surface, which we created here, we get uh, horizontal slices because we set contour normal direction and that direction is Z vector. Let me explain now what we need to place in the input D. First, we will create the brick. So a single brick we need to create using domain box component. In the B, we'll set the base plane. So I pick uh, this point, 
this point will place in the xy plane. So this is important to place in the xy plane. Now we need to define these three values. A red line always represent x direction. So this is x, this is y, and this is z. So in the x we will set uh, 0 0.3, so this one. In the y we will set 0 0.16, and in the z we will place a 0 a 0 0.6. So based on these three parameters we will create the box. Now somehow this box should be placed on our surface or on our contours. Let me get back here. Once we have uh, the height of the brick, uh, that number will place in the D, in the distance between two contours. If we don't want to have any gap between uh, two rows of bricks, we'll place a zero. If we want to have a gap, we can place some number here and this number will determine the gap between two horizontal set of uh, bricks. All right. Now, once we have the contours, we want to make sure that all these contours have the same direction. Sometimes you will get um, flip direction on the top or on the bottom. So that's why I use here flip curve. So the out here, these curves I will place in the C of the flip curve and in the G we'll take one curve as a guide curve. You can choose any of these curves. I pick uh, the one with the index zero, but don't forget to flatten uh, this data tree. Once we set this curve as a, a guide curve for, the, for, for flipping, we are sure now that all these curves have the same direction. All right, uh, now we will divide each curve, but before that we have one step in between. And in that step, I will try to demonstrate how to avoid overlapping of bricks. Once we have all these curves, all of them in the same direction, we will calculate the length of each curve. So here we have the length. Then uh, the length of the curve will divide with the brick length. And we get some value. Once we divide, we have the result here. We are going to round these numbers. I will use uh, f, which means uh, all integer numbers below these numbers. It means, for example, this uh, number will be rounded on 68, this number will be rounded on 67, this number will be rounded on 65, this one 65, and so on. Once we have uh, the list of numbers in one branch, we are going to sort them. Then we'll extract uh, the smallest number so which is 45 and 45 will multiply by 2. Why we're going to multiply by 2 because let me uh, sketch here. In order to get uh, this kind of shape we'll take these contour lines and divide them so we have point here, 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 something like this and in the next row we'll point we'll have point here, here, here something like this and so on then we'll say okay choose this point this point this point and this point then in the next branch we will choose another points to position the bricks so once we divide we will use one two three four points that's why we will double these division points instead of having four we'll have eight and then later on, on these eight points, we'll just extract four. And uh, this one we can place here. I will explain this step later. Once we divide each curve, we need to create the planes. The plane should be oriented like this. So this should be X and normal vector should be Y. So this is the plane. Then on the next point, we'll use the tangent create the x vector of the plane and the normal to create a y uh, direction of the plane. Then on this one this will be x based on the tangent and here will be y and so on. In order to create uh, this kind of planes 
we will, we are going to use tangent and this vector. In order to extract this vector, we will use component cross product. So basically, if we place two vectors, let's say this will be one vector which is going to place in the cross product, which is tangent, you can see it here. And the Z vector, which is this one, cross product will uh, give us uh, the normal vector on this plane. So if we have this plane, the normal vector will be this one. So uh, this vector will be the y vector of the plane we need. In the x, we'll play the tangent. All right, we'll use component construct plane. Uh, the original plane will be the vision point of the curve. And these two uh, inputs I already explained. All right, so now we have planes at each division point on every contour line. But as I explained previously, we want to create this kind of geometry. It means that in the branch 0, 2, 4 and so on, we'll use pattern uh, 1, 0 because we have division points here, here, here and we want to extract every second. So we want to extract this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. In the branches 0, 2, 4, we will use cal pattern 0, 1, but in the branches 1, 3, 5, and so on. So basically we want to extract this point. Let's imagine we have the same position of the points. And we want to extract every second. And on this position, we are going to place the brick. Here, we will invert the pattern. So we'll use the pattern 0, 1. So let's see how we can do that. There is a component split tree. In the D, we'll place the planes. In the M, we'll place the mask or the syntax, which branches we want to extract. Let me open this here. Maybe we should simplify it. So we want to extract branches 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on. Instead of, you know, writing all these branches, you can just put the syntax like this. You should just place uh, this syntax and it means that all branches in this order will be in the output P. P means uh, positive or uh, uh, it will extract these branches. These are the original data and this is extracted data based on this syntax. You can see that branches 0, 2, 4 and so on are positioned here and in the N is the negative set of data or which is not placed here. And here we have branch 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 and, and so on. And here we have branches 0, 2, 4, 6. All right. So as I mentioned previously, for this data, we'll use pattern 1, 0 and take out every second point on curve. All right. Let me again turn on this. So this is original points. And these are points that we extracted. So you can see here that on the branches 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, we take out first one, then the third one, fifth one, and so on. But for the negative data or data of branches 1, 3, 5, 7, we will invert the pattern. So right click here and check invert. And if I place this here, you can see that the first item we didn't extract, we extract the second one then the fourth one, sixth, and so on. All right, now once we have these two set of planes, we're going to merge them into one data tree. And in the last step, we're going to position the bricks at these planes. For that, we'll use component orient. In the G, we should place the geometry which we want to position on these planes. So that's the brick or the box we create here. So this input goes here. In the A, we will place uh, this XY plane on, on which we generated the box. So in the, uh, the same input we place in the B. So this guy goes here. 
and in the B we'll place uh, these planes which we generated based on the cal pattern. All right, and once I turn this on, we'll get desired result. Now I'm going to explain the one small step which I skip, and that step is uh, this one. So if you have some places where you have bricks overlapped, like here, we can uh, use subtraction component. So instead of having 90 division, we can have, uh, let's say 75. So this number we're going to subtract with the slider we set here. So for example, if we set here 10 or 12, this number goes here. On that way, we'll try to avoid overlapping of the bricks because that in real life, it's not possible to create. If you have the brick, then they shouldn't be overlapped. If you want to have a less density, you can increase this slider. So let me change the maximum. And if we increase this slider, we will get less density of the bricks uh, within this wall. All right, guys, if you made this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button if you like this video. Consider subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the future videos. For all of you who would like to go a step further, we created an extended tutorial in which we'll add a few layers of complexity. And as a final output, we'll get two different results. In the first method, we will use multiple alternator points based on their position and the range we set, the bricks will be rotated. Another method involves the curve as an attractor. Based on proximity from the curve to the bricks, they will be rotated. This you can watch on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. With that, you will also get access to all our extended tutorials and project files. Quick announcement guys, if you're interested in a structured step-by-step -step learning approach with personal one-on-one -on -one support 24-7 and homework exercises, feel free to send an application for our Rhino for Architects online course and schedule your call with us where you will get more information about that. First link in the description. The course covers various topics like parametric modeling with grasshopper, fluid form modeling with sub D, architectural visualization, animation, presentation techniques and way more things. As we currently have a couple of available spots, I invite you to apply today and grab this golden nugget before it's gone. I would like to send special thanks to all our Patreon supporters. If you like what we do, please consider becoming Patreon yourself. Take care and see you soon. Yeah.